The Anatomy and Physiology for Sports Diploma, this is the UK, UK Level 3, that requires that you understand the structure and function of cells. This makes a lot of sense to start with the cells because cells make up a combination of cells together in the tissues, the tissues make up the organs and the systems. So we do need to understand some basic cellular anatomy and physiology in order to be able to take the sports diploma. The smallest living structure in the body is an atom. And many atoms joined together form a molecule. And lots of molecules joined together are going to make up cells in the body. Now, lots of cells in the body make up the tissues, and it's the tissues with those cells that make up organs. And the body is made up of lots of organs, and those organs are formed into systems. So the stomach is part of the digestive system, the heart is part of the cardiovascular system, the lungs are part of the respiratory system. And at the end of the day, those systems make up us and we are an organism. So in this anatomy and physiology presentation, we're gonna start with looking a little bit more in depth at what atoms, molecules, and cells are. What you need to understand is that the smallest particle of matter is an atom. These can't even be seen under a microscope, they're so small. And most living things are made up of hydrogen, carbon, oxygen. And that these atoms combined together to form a molecule. And our cells, or every living cell in our body, is made up of atoms and molecules as well. Our body has seven primary functions in order to keep it alive. And these are movement, excretion, respiration, reproduction, nutrition, growth, responding to um, a stimulus. Those seven primary functions keep us alive and our cells have to perform those seven primary functions as well. And although they don't have um, lungs and they don't have a digestive system like our bodies do, they still need to process oxygen and carbon dioxide and they need nourishment just like the stomach would do and the digestive system. So we're going to move on to what a cell is made up of. The cell is the smallest most basic unit of matter in the body and as I said before we're going to be talking about a generalized cell but in this picture you can see some specific cells top left hand corner is a nerve cell the top right hand corner you can see a picture of a white blood cell below that is the picture of the red blood cell the little middle red one stretched cell is a muscle cell bottom left is the ovum or egg and in the middle of the bottom is a sperm. So there are different types of cells, but we're going to discuss one generic cell with all the baby organs within it. We're gonna look at a generalized cell, and it's a good idea at this stage if you draw the cell to help you remember it. So we have now discussed that the cell membrane holds everything in and inside the cell it's full of cytoplasm. That's the name of the jelly-like substance within a cell, cytoplasm. 
Within the cell, you have lots of baby organelles. So these are baby organs within the cell. And we're going to talk about those throughout the rest of this presentation. We have the mitochondria, sausage-shaped cells at the top of the cell. Endoplasmic reticulum. Ribosomes. Lysosomes. Vacuole. Golgi apparatus. Centrosome. Centrioles. Nucleus. Nucleolus. These are the names of the organelles within the cell that you need to be familiar with. You need to be familiar with their name and what they do, briefly what they do. The cell membrane is the wall of the cell and its function is to keep everything inside, inside, so to stop the cytoplasm from running out of the cell and to keep the organelles which float in the cytoplasm and the nucleus within the cell. The cell walls are semi-permeable, which means that like a sieve, it will allow some things through the walls, but other things that are too big are kept out. If you look at this picture of the cell membrane, you can see that there are almost these gates, purple gates along the edge of the cell membrane, and these allow the larger things into the cell that can't pass through the cell wall. The cell walls made of protein threads and lipids as well. And everything in the cell is kept inside by the cell membrane. The Latin name for cell is cyto. And we need to include in your syllabus an understanding of what cytoplasm is, what cytosol is, and what the cytoskeleton is. So ske cell skeleton maintains the shape and also directs the movement within the cell. We also have cytosol, that's the name for the colourless jelly-like liquid that makes up cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is a form of protoplasm. Protoplasm is a jelly-like substance made of protein and when that protoplasm is within the cell, it's called cytoplasm. When that protoplasm is in the nucleus, it's nucleoplasm. So cytoplasm is the protoplasm, but found inside a cell. And it's the protoplasm that fills the cell from membrane to nucleus. And it's made up of this colourless jelly liquid called cytosol. Um, and then the cytoskeleton, as I said, maintains the shape of the cell. So cytoplasm, cytosol and cytoskeleton all refers to the cell. So any word you come across in biology that begins with cyto, you could hazard a good guess that that is actually referring to the cell. The mitochondria is a sausage-shaped organelle floating around in the cytoplasm. This is the powerhouse of the cell. This is what provides energy to the cell. And there are two chemicals in the body called adenosine diphosphate, or ADP, and adenosine triphosphate. These two chemicals are what are converted into energy. And it's the mitochondria that converts these two chemicals into energy. It's a chemical reaction. All you need to know for your syllabus is that mitochondria is your powerhouse and that ADP and ATP are stripped chemicals which produce energy. There are a lot more mitochondria within a muscle 
cell. Because obviously muscles need an awful lot of energy to make us move. So the mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell and they strip ADP and ATP in order to create energy. Within the cell, you have something called an endoplasmic reticulum. Now, a reticulum is a network, and this is like a labyrinth of canals and sacs that run throughout the cell. It takes up most of the cell, and this is how things circulate and move around the cell. None of the different contents that want to pass in and out the cell, the gases, the proteins, the lipids have legs. So they don't go walking from A to B, from one organelle to another. So they circulate and move around the cell through the endoplasmic reticulum. Now this reticulum has rough and smooth walls. And the smooth walls make it really fast. A bit like a ski slalom made of ice. The smoother it is, the faster things are going to move through it. Then you have rough reticulum. Now it's to the rough reticulum that is there to catch the ribosomes. As the ribosomes rush through the cell, circulating, moving through the cell, they get caught up on the rough walls of the endoplasmic reticulum. They're collected there, they're gathered there. So the endoplasmic reticulum, or the ER, it's sometimes called, this is the labyrinth of sacs and canals, like a maze through the cell, and it's all about circulation and movement. The ribosomes are a protein factory. Protein is for growth and repair. And ribosomes are made up of granules of RNA. Repeat after me. Ribonucleic acid. Ribonucleic acid or RNA is what the ribosomes are made of. And they produce protein. They are attached to the rough ER, endoplasmic reticulum. And they are collected by the Golgi apparatus, where they're then processed. So ribosomes are a protein factory for growth and repair made of ribonucleic acid. They look like little ribena in all the pictures. The lysosome is a, an organelle that produces digestive enzymes. It produces these so that they can break down dangerous materials that enter the cell. So every time a bacteria or a virus invades the cell, the lysosome's job is to break it down with enzymes. Also, any worn out organelles, the equivalent of our, you know, when we buy a new fridge or a new washing machine, we do that with the organelles. We rebuild a new organelle when the old one's worn out. So the old organelles would be sent to the lysosome to be broken down by digestive juices. So it's a little bit like pouring bleach um, or acid over these organelles. They will break them down so that any waste products then can be taken to the vacuoles ready for getting rid of from the cell, so from evacuation from the cell, really. A vacuole is a vacant space or dustbin, a storage for transportation of waste. Before we get rid of it, before it's evacuated from the cell, all of the ingested waste prior to excretion from the cell is stored here. So this is like a vacant lot, an empty space ready to be disposed of through the cell wall and evacuated. The Golgi apparatus is about processing proteins. And it's, if you imagine Golgi, I like to think of him as a person. Golgi collects the ribosomes from the rough walls of the endoplasmic reticulum. 
he collects them up, he processes them, he packages them up, ready to be transported wherever they need to go. That might be within the cell, if the cell needs to create and repair more organelles, or it might mean that they're packed up and shipped out of the cell to somewhere else that they're needed. So Golgi and his apparatus are processing the ribosomes which are collected for him to do that on the rough walls of the endoplasmic reticulum. These are processed, modified, sometimes released through the cell membrane, CM means cell membrane, out of the cell to another part of the body. But sometimes it's to somewhere within the cell that needs protein for growth and repair. The centrosomes is the name of the organelle that houses the centrioles. The centrioles are like asparagus, they're like rods, green rods, rod-like structures which are very important in the process of mitosis. Mitosis is the name for cell reproduction or division. It's asexual reproduction. It's how the cells replicate themselves. And the centrosomes and the centrioles are very involved in asexual reproduction. The nucleus is the control centre of the cell, it's the head office. It's full of protoplasm, but the protoplasm here is called nucleoplasm because it's within the nucleus. This is where we have chromosomes. Chromosomes are made up of strands of DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So say that after me. Deoxyribonucleic acid. This is what makes up our chromosomes and this is what carries our genetic blueprint. I'll tell you more about that on the next slide. But you do need to understand that the nucleus is the control centre. It's made up of the nucleoplasm. And this is where you would find chromosomes and deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. Chromatin is a chemical that's needed for chromosome production. The nucleolus inside the nucleus is where ribosomes are made. This is where the ribonucleic acid is made into ribosomes. So it's a small structure that makes ribosomes. And ribosomes, if you remember earlier, to recap, are made of protein. So they're protein factories. So the nucleolus' job within the nucleus is to produce ribosomes which are made of RNA, ribonucleic acid. Chromosomes are composed of DNA. A chromosome, the word, comes from chroma and some. Chroma means colour, and these DNA strands are very colourful, and some is body. And apparently, these chromosomes and their strands of DNA are what depict what species we are. As human beings, we have 46 chromosomes that make up us as human beings. We have 23 from either parent. So 23 are found in the egg from our mother and 23 are found in the sperm of our father. And when the two come together um, in sexual reproduction, that will give us 46 chromosomes which will make a, a baby. This depicts all the attributes that we might have as a person, our skin colour, hair colour, what type of diseases we're likely to suffer from. Everything that we are physically comes from our chromosomes. So the chromosomes are a blueprint or genetic history carried in our DNA. We all know that these days DNA can be detective in, detected in crime scenes and we can grow DNA in order to replace um, stem cells. So 
This is where they all come from. Within any living cell within our body, within the nucleus, we have our chromosomes which carry these DNA strands, which carry all our blueprint of who we are and our history of our illnesses and our heredity, hereditary genes. The chromosomes play an important part in mitosis, and mitosis is the name of asexual reproduction. The chromosomes are divided into strands, and these two strands are called chromatids. They're held together at the middle, like at a waist, by the centromere. The centromere is the area that holds these two strands together. During mitosis, the centromere relaxes its grip and the two chromatids are pulled apart to make two daughter cells. Mitosis is asexual reproduction and it's a complicated process and it has four levels to that process and luckily now we don't need to know all four levels and phases of the mitosis process. All we really need to understand is that as the chromosomes pull apart and the two halves travel to either poles of the The process of mitosis, asexual reproduction, where the cells replicate themselves, is a complex process divided into four phases. And we no longer need to know all there is to know about those phases. Um, we just need to have an understanding that by the fourth phase, those chromosomes have divided and formed two identical daughter cells. And that happens in the fourth phase. So this is the fourth phase of mitosis is what is important in your syllabus.